dear students in last class we have discussed electrostatic voltmeter used for high voltage measurement in today's class we shall discuss generating voltmeter to understand the working of generating voltmeter we should have the clear cut knowledge of capacitance of a given capacitor capacitance of a capacitor C is equal to epsilon A by D where epsilon is permittivity of the medium between two parallel plates A is area of parallel plates D is distance between the parallel plates so we are having two parallel plates of same size such that two plates overlap each other 100% here area of each parallel plate is A The distance between parallel plates is D and epsilon is the permittivity of the medium between two parallel plates. The medium may be anything. It may be solid dielectric or gaseous dielectric like air. Now here C is equal to epsilon a by d if one of the parallel plates is displaced now overlapping area has reduced here say the overlapping area is only a dash but the distance between two parallel plates is d only with the permittivity of the medium between the two parallel plates epsilon then in this case capacitance of capacitor is given by epsilon a dash by d it means that capacitance of a capacitor is directly proportional to overlapping area of the parallel plates of a capacitor also you can look at these two equations here for the capacitance of a capacitor 
capacitance of capacitor is inversely proportional to the distance between two parallel plates. So we can write here C is proportional to A and inversely proportional to D. Next we will study the construction of generating voltmeter. Here what you see is the constructional diagram of generating voltmeter. S3 is a fixed electrode which is a circular disc. This disc is stationary. To S3, high voltage is applied. S0 is a rotating type electrode. It is connected to the constant speed motor. The motor may be synchronous motor. You can see the shape of S0 here. It is having sector like plate here. S1 and S2 both are stationary electrodes. S1 shape you can see here. It is a circular disc with a slot having the shape of sectors and S2 is a solid circular disc. Now we will see how this generating voltmeter works. Here the high voltage will be applied. The motor will be switched on. S0 will be rotating at constant speed. When S0 starts to rotate at constant speed, the overlapping area between S3 and S2 keeps changing because of the shapes of the electrodes here. And hence, the capacitance between the plates S3 and S2 keeps changing. When the capacitance between S2 and S3 changes, there will be change in the current flowing through the capacitor and that change in the current will be measured by the micro-ammeter. Since the current flowing through the micro-ammeter is proportional to the rate of change of capacitance, we can calibrate the micro-ammeter scale in terms of the applied high voltage here. Before we go to the principle of operation, we will write few lines on the construction of this instrument. So along with the figure, you can write S3 is HV electrode, S0 is rotor, S1 and S2 are fixed electrodes. Generating type 
voltmeter consists of four electrodes namely s3 s not s1 and s2 with the shapes given in the figure above yes not is called the rotor because it is connected to the shaft of constant speed motor now we will discuss the principle of operation the charge stored on the parallel plates of a capacitor is given by Q equal to C into V where C is capacitance of capacitor and V is voltage across capacitor if the capacitance of capacitor changes with respect to time then the current I is given by rate of flow of charges that is dq by dt that is equal to d by dt of c into v the 
that is equal to V into DC by DT plus C into DV by DT. Since applied voltage V is constant I will become equal to V into DC by DT. If variation of capacitance is in the limits C0 and C0 plus Cm sinusoidally as C equal to C naught plus C m into sin omega t the current i may be calculated as V into d by dt of c that is V into d by dt of c naught plus cm sin omega t. Since c naught is constant differentiation of C0 will be 0, we get V into Cm into omega cos omega t. Since V into Cm omega is having the unit of current, I will call it as peak current Im and I will write cos omega t as it is. Where I m is equal to V C m where I m is equal to V C m into omega. Since I RMS is I M by root 2, we can write I RMS as V C M into omega by root 2. Now from the expression for I RMS, we see that I RMS is proportional to the supply voltage V for the constant angular velocity omega. from expression for IRMS
we can write I RMS as directly proportional to supply voltage here supply voltage means high voltage under measurement for constant angular frequency of rotor therefore we can calibrate Ammeter scale to high voltage scale. Remember here the voltage under measurement is DC voltage. This instrument can also be used for measurement of AC voltage by making rotors angular frequency equal to or half of HV supply frequency now we have to understand how we get this variable capacitance to understand we will refer back to the constructional diagram Here in this diagram you can see the electrode S0 and S1 are having the complementary shapes whereas S3 and S2 are having circular disc shape because of the shape of S0 and S1 and S0 being rotating electrode there will be sinusoidal 
variation in the capacitance between the plates S3 and S2. Already we have seen that if the overlapping area changes, the capacitance of a capacitor also changes. So here, by having these two shapes of the electrodes between S3 and S2, the overlapping area is changed sinusoidally. Therefore, capacitance also changes sinusoidally. And you can see here micrometer, it measures RMS value of the current. So in the principle of operation we have seen, the RMS value measured is proportional to the high voltage applied to electrode S3. So which capacitance we have considered? We have considered the capacitance between plates S3 and S2. Next we will see advantages and the disadvantages or limitations of generating voltmeter. Advantages no source loading by the meter since this instrument is capacitive type instrument the current drawn from the source will be negligible that is almost it is equal to zero therefore there will be no loading therefore the source will not be loaded. High voltage electrode is not connected directly to the instrument. High voltage electrode is kept away from the instrument. Scale is linear and extension of range is easy. You have seen that the RMS current is proportional to the voltage applied to the high voltage electrode. That means the scale is linear. And we can extend the range of the instrument very easily. So to extend the range of instrument there are different ways. One of them is by varying the distance between the electrodes. A very convenient instrument for electrostatic devices such as Van de Graaff generator and particle accelerator. Since uh, the current supplied by Van de Graaff generator and particle accelerator are very very less hence the generating voltmeter can be used with these devices very much conveniently next we will look at the disadvantages of generating voltmeter limitations of generating voltmeter first one they require calibration we have seen that ammeter measuring rms value of the current is used here and rms current is proportional to the hv voltage supplied to high voltage electrode and hence the ammeter scale should be converted into the voltage scale. Second one, careful construction is required and is a cumbersome instrument requiring an auxiliary drive. For this instrument very uh, careful construction is required because any change 
in the distance between the electrodes or if the plates are not mounted parallel to each other in that case there will be errors in the measurement and also this type of instrument needs a motor to drive the rotor and hence uh, the construction is little bit cumbersome third one disturbance in position and mounting make the calibration invalid see once the instrument is calibrated that that is that is if the scale of ammeter is converted into voltage scale and then if the distance between the plates is changed there will be change in the capacitance value and the calibration made will become invalid or there will be lot of error involved in the measurement so these things are to be kept in mind dear students i will stop the class here and continue in next class thank you